answers to Theon or Reek, give it up for Alfie Allen. He's one of the directors of Game of Thrones. He directed episodes 9 and 10 this year. Please welcome David Nutter, everybody. She plays Gilly, Hannah Murray. And Liam, you can come out now as well. Thank you, Liam. Uh, so this is very exciting because it's always fun to see all of you guys together because on the show, of course, we don't see you together enough. Uh, I met Maisie and Sophie last year here at Comic-Con, and it's safe to say you guys see each other in San Diego more than you see each other in Westeros. Is that... I think that's true. We see each other more outside of the UK than, yeah, than we do. And is it nice this time of year when you can get together and actually see the cast? Is that nice for everybody? Yes, sir. It is? Does anybody want to say otherwise? Does anybody want to say that they prefer it more when they're separate? So here's a question I have. How many of you, because we're at a very interesting point of Game of Thrones where we are now up to the books. Uh, so, how many of you had read the books? How many of you were so curious as to the outcomes of your character that you read ahead? Did anyone? <laughs> Gwendolyn, you did the reading? I did the homework. All right, that's very good. For once. And now, for everyone else, was there, did anyone, did fans of the books ever ruin it for you? Did people ever, did you have to, like, prevent that from happening when people came up to you? Is that something that, that when you were at risk of? People would come up and be like, Arya goes blind. And even though I didn't know, I'd be like, yeah, I know, yeah, I'm so aware. <laughs> and pretend I knew when I didn't. <laughs> And now that we're, I guess this is a question for everybody, now that we are now beyond the books, how, what level of secrecy are they holding you guys to? Is it more intense than ever? Yeah, far more intense. Like when you get scripts, do you have to sign like a million things? We can't tell you. You can't even tell me the level of secrecy. <laughs> you can't even say there's a lot of secrecy. Wow, if Varys can't tell you, no one can tell you. <laughs> So, obviously that's got it for Carolyn. For you guys, that has to be a huge issue this year. And fans of the show, I think, will, obviously we've seen, will follow every piece of casting, every location photo. Do you have to try harder than ever now that you are sort of at the book point of the show? Yeah, I think we're at the book point and we're at the, you know, the world in balance point. And so I think that, um, you know, we've always tried to maintain a level of, uh, Surprise for people who watch the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but um, I, I, yeah, it, it, with every you know season, it gets more and more. What are the conversation levels like with George at this point and the writers of the show? Like, how much are you talking to him? To I think they talk to him, you know, as much as they have before. I mean, he's laid out a lot of sort of what his thinking was going forward, and then Dan and David have jumped off from there. Got it. Um, I will say it's so wonderful to see all of you out of costume because uh, some of you have to wear some pretty lousy costumes. Uh, you guys just wear sacks, basically. <laughs> so it's great. Uh, but Alfie, I have a loincloth. Seeing you the best, <laughs> and seeing you with ten fingers and ten toes is just outstanding. I, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You uh, you went through probably one of the roughest seasons the last couple of seasons. Yeah, I think seasons three, four, and um, and five. Yeah. <laughs> 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 If you were a little nicer in seasons one or two, maybe wow. that could have happened. You know? Yeah, well, um, for us all. Uh, I think one of my favorite things about the finale was, you know, Theon finally making a choice, like make a decision. Was that exciting for you to read that and see that you actually got to move in a different direction than you'd been in? Um, yeah, I mean, it was as an actor. It would have been interesting to see sort of where it could have gone if perhaps it would have gone darker, but yeah, it's nice to sort of see some light at the end of the tunnel for the character. I am a little bit human. <laughs> uh, John and Hannah, so happy. Gilly and Samuel finally got together this year. That was the...
the will he or won't, will they or won't they of Game of Thrones, the Sam and Diane, if you will. <laughs> um, but you have to be worried because most times when people hook up on the show, it doesn't like portend good things. Uh, are, are you? Uh, what are you looking forward to with the with your relationship moving forward? Where do you hope that it goes? I think Sam would just happily accept more of the same. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Sam's one of those people who tries to inject a bit of exotica into his sex life. Yeah. I, I think he's kind of happy. So is that maybe when he's looking at all those books, you think that's actually what he's reading about? Oh, you're going to be, he's hollowed the books out. It's a few little, little sketches. Well, I've often said, I've said it before, that I think up until, you know, Gilly, you know, <laughs> Gilly. Yeah. She, uh, I, I, I always thought that Sam used to think about sex the way that most people think about space. In so much as, in so much as it's something that goes on. He's got nothing to do with it. I think he's, he used to see it from a purely kind of academic standpoint. Nothing that he thought he'd have. He's fascinated by it in a kind of childlike way, but nothing that he thought he'd have. It's similar to the way I am with dancing or something like that. But the thing about when Gilly turned up and gave him a bit of practical, you know, I, it just occurred to me, I don't know enough about science to be able to finish that metaphor off. <laughs> so, you know, thanks again, school. I wouldn't be surprised if the whole season six is just you walking around saying, did you hear? <laughs> hear my excellent news. Well, he's, done, he's done that before. Yeah. He, he killed a white walker, swanned around for a few seasons, telling everybody about it. Nobody yeah. believed him. Do you know what? S such as Sam is, I reckon even less people will believe this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, David, uh, you directed the last two episodes, which were fantastic. The end of episode nine, uh, The Dragon in the Fighting Pits, one of the most incredible uh, scenes in the history of the show. How long, how much longer did it take to shoot that than a normal episode? Well, all I know is for that sequence, it was two days of second unit, and then we had 10 days of first unit that we shot. So it was about a 10 day experience for myself that uh, I just wanted to physically survive it, and fortunately I did. <laughs> and the dragon trainer just must be essential. <laughs> you gotta have a great dragon trainer and good treats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Natalie, Marguerite, uh, one of the toughest characters to figure out. I feel like she's at a better, she's at a sympathetic place now. What I love about her, the, n the more she dislikes somebody, the nicer she is. It must be fun to play. A lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. I, I, poor Marjorie, she just, they left her in a cell. Yeah. That's where, I guess we're just gonna find out how she's- Where, where yeah. She, oh, I, Marjorie. She needs a shower and a coffee, I'm sure by now. I think you should do a crossover with Orange is the New Black, I think. <laughs> just, I'm just throwing that out there. I, know I think like that's an excellent idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gwendolyn, I don't want to blame you for the things your character did. Go ahead. You had one job, which was just to keep an eye out <laughs> for a candle in a window. One job. <laughs> you blow it, and let's be honest. I didn't blow the candle. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Too soon. What can I say? I feel like it's... I had to stand for three months watching a window to wait for a candle. Well, that... I mean, give me a break. You, hey, you don't have to take these oaths. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, that's how it works. I just take on a little bit too much. I'm what just saying, I, I hope season I'm six, ambitious. We see Brienne's peer review, because I think she's going to not like what she hears. <laughs> um, uh, Varys is one of the most interesting characters, uh, both in the book and in the show. Uh, so uh, enjoyed uh, you this season uh, uh, with Peter. You guys are a great team. Um, when you're sort of playing, because it's very hard to even know reading the books, is Varys a very good person or is Varys a very bad person? Is Varys looking out for himself? What are you, uh, not knowing fully, because we don't really know, like what are you rooting for in Varys as you play him? Like what do you hope is his core? Uh, good, mm -hmm. ultimately, but, uh, but it's one of the reasons I didn't read the books is because you can only play the moment. Mm -hmm. You can't play knowledge, you can't play I know what's going to happen next or, you know, so you just play the moment and then then that takes the responsibility off you if you're just playing the scene. I think we could all use a Varys in our lives, I think. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, 
Made me a lot of money. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, Liam, I, uh, you know, we'll say, I, I mean, look, we don't really know. Stannis wasn't on camera, as you guys do a really nice job. You kill a lot of people right off camera. I really appreciate that. Uh, gives us something to talk about online. <laughs> um, I'm very happy uh, for Davos because I think, I gotta be honest, I don't... You're happy uh, for Davos? I'm happy for Davos because I think with Stannis out of the way, you could lighten up a little bit. I think... <laughs> I don't think he was a great friend for you. And I'm just looking for, I want to see Davos smile a little bit more. And uh, I think getting Stannis out of the way will be good. I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah. Especially when he finds out what that did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, again, you didn't have to, you should have stayed, and it wouldn't have happened. Um, oh, yeah, hold on, hold on. I tried. I did try. I think these people will back me up here. Did I try? The people have spoken. I thank you. Good night. Uh, uh, Carice, uh, it's yes. a little bit happy here. This is, uh, give it up for Carice. <laughs> True story, I know I've told this before, Carice and I have known each other uh, for almost 20 years. Oh, here we go. And Carice, <laughs> when Carice was auditioning for this, she called me because she knew that I would be the kind of person who would have read these books <laughs> and asked me if I thought it was a good part, and I told you it was, right? Thank you, Seth. You're welcome, and that's all I've been waiting for. <laughs> Um, I, one of the uh, scenes that we, uh, uh, Liam just referred to, one of the toughest scenes I think for everybody to watch this year, uh, was the burning uh, scene with Shireen. Was that a very, I mean, I assume for everyone here, there has to be a great level of levity meeting you all backstage. Obviously, uh, you are not as dark as the characters you play. Was that a hard scene to shoot, though? I mean, was there levity on set on a day like that? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not a levity kind of a situation. It was a... Uh... Tough weather, tough, tough setting, and everyone really needed to feel what was going to happen to this young girl. And we were all into it. The uh, actors were all into the sequence. The extras were into it, and it was just an amazingly powerful moment that uh, I think was just turned out just right. It was a very powerful scene. This year, there seemed to be, you know, a couple of times where the audience thought things were rougher than they were even used to in the place. When you spend a lot of time in Westeros, it seems weird that you would be ever caught off guard. Were you surprised by that feedback from the audience? You know, I think people like to get involved in a conversation, and I think also the more you know your characters, the more painful it is when something bad happens to them. And somebody like Shireen, uh, you know, when that happens to Shireen, I mean, she's such a really interesting, and you just feel for this girl, and, um, but, just because it's painful doesn't mean it's not a good point of the story. And I think it, that's, um, it wasn't done because of the pain, but uh, it was done in spite of the pain. Now every time, uh, most times obviously, a character dies on the show, you've always been able to blame it on the author, George R. R. Martin. You say to actors, look, this is in the book, there was nothing we could do. Now that you're a little bit ahead, do you feel like people are lobbying We're you more? We're still gonna blame. Okay, you're still gonna blame. <laughs> Um, well, as Sophie and Maisie, I would just say, like, we're, it's very hard for a Stark in Westeros, as we know. Um, but we sort of started the show with the Starks, and I just need to ask you guys to do whatever you can to either lobby George R.R. R. or the creators of the show, because I really think, as, a, as fans of the show, we need you guys to stay alive. So can you do that for us? <laughs> we're trying, dude. We're trying? <laughs> we're trying, but they keep on doing bad stuff to us, you know? Yeah. I don't know what it is gonna... about the Starks, man. <laughs> they just hate us. <laughs> I don't know how Arya is going to do without her eyes in the new season, but yeah. I'm tr I'll try. All right, good, good. Um, we, I want to take questions from everybody here, so uh, if you guys want to start lining up for that, and while we do, uh, we have another uh, surprise for you guys. Please enjoy uh, this reel of Game of Thrones auditions. Uh, so let's start taking some questions uh, from you, the audience. How does this, uh, there we go. There's a light, there's a mic. Here comes some people. Yeah. It's quite an operation. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name's Lila. Hi, Lila. My question is for Maisie Williams. I just want to say, Bala Magulis. Bala Dahides. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I also wanted to know what challenges do you foresee going forward playing Arya um, now that she's blind and everything? <laughs> um, well, from the last scene that we shot um, with David, uh, the contacts that I was wearing for that big reveal at the end, I did it for one shot, so I only had them in for about 15 minutes. And they're really, really thick and really, really wide to get into your eye, but when, once they're in, they took a couple of minutes to get a bit more comfortable. Um, but then they're straight back out again, so I'm worried if I'm going to have to do any fighting or anything. One, I can't see, and two, they're extremely uncomfortable. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what they write in, because it takes them three seconds to be like, Arya fights blind, but it takes me <laughs> a long time to master that. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Thank well, at least you won't have to drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. Hi, my name is Jacob. My question is for the incredibly talented and beautiful Natalie Dormer. <laughs> um, so I feel like with Marjorie, we finally got to a point in the story where she's accomplished a lot of what she set out to do. She's become queen, not Joffrey's queen, but Tommen, whom she can persuade. Um, yet in season five, we didn't see her accomplish a lot with this power. Um, what can we expect any grand schemes from Queen Marjorie in Season 6? Um, well, <laughs> can't say anything. I will say, um, our cast here is, is they're going to have a hard time answering questions about what's going to happen moving forward. I think that's probably fair, right? Yeah, thanks, Seth. You're welcome. Because uh, I tried backstage and they wouldn't tell me and uh, <laughs> I'm kind of famous, so. <laughs> I got nothing. To be perfectly um, honest, honey, um, I, a lot of us sitting at this table are in exactly the same position as you guys. David and Dan keep their cards very close to their chest, and I, I don't have an effing clue what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> I really don't. All I can tell you is that uh, Grandma ain't around to look after her anymore, and she... Uh, is in a situation, like a lot of the characters are sitting next to me, they're all in new situations where they really don't know how they're going to play their next move. So I think Marjorie's in quite a bit of trouble, to be honest. A quick question for Carolyn. How do you, when you start giving out scripts, do you compartmentalize? Does everybody see the full script or do people just see their scenes in their, like, city or, or town? You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, everybody gets their, the, the home. Everybody gets all of it. So they do know, they just won't tell you. Okay. No, they don't, actually. I mean, they don't, just because they get them doesn't mean they read them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, a stunning lack of curiosity. Um, <laughs> yes, next question. <clears throat> hey. All right, my question is for everyone. Who's going to miss Kit the most since he's obviously dead? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody gonna miss Mr. Kit even a little bit? His, his hairdresser? <laughs> Kit who? We couldn't wait for him to be gone, to be honest. Yeah. That hair, so annoying. <laughs> hair the face. Probably always in the shower. Because you guys share like one flat, right? Yeah. 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 Um, that's what uh, British people call apartments. Anyways, uh, <laughs> just trying to fit in, you guys. Next one. <laughs> Nick, and um, I wanted to say, kind of the whole cast. Right day, right day to wear that shirt. And I do know one thing that Jon Snow doesn't know. But I have a question for Carice. Yes. Have you ever hung yes. out with Thoros Amir and like learned some cool tricks from him that might come in handy in the future? Maybe? I mean, as Natalie just pointed out, I'm as in the dark as you all are, and it's pretty dark, I admit, um, and full of terrors. <laughs> uh, but who knows, man? Um, I can't tell you anything. Sorry. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I think 
think he was pretty just happy to get the shirt out there. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, he's okay. His question to get answered. Hey, how you doing? Hi, um, my name is Elizabeth. Um, my question is for everybody. If you could change one thing about the last season, what would it be? Like a death or something your character did. Oh, I would wait for the candle. Thank you. <laughs> Was that so hard to take a little bit of responsibility? Yeah, I, I know. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you, Gwendolyn. And if you'd have waited for the candle, I'd still have a boss. <laughs> uh, yes. Hello, I'm Catherine. Um, I do want to say shame to somebody in the audience. You know who you are. And my, well, hi to everybody up there. My question is for the whole cast, is there any stunts that you wanted to do that your stunt double got to do instead? I, I do all my own stunts. <laughs> 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 I feel kind of guilty because everyone else, like especially Gwendolyn and all the warriors, fight and have 12 day scenes and I have an afternoon bitching with Peter Dinklage. <laughs> so I think apart from Hodor, I have, uh, I have the least physicality to do. <laughs> so every time that we see you pouring wine, that's you pouring. No, that's my double. Oh, that's your double. That's okay. my uh, stunt double. <laughs> yes. Oh, my name is Joey. I just wanted to say, first off, you guys are all great. I love the show. Thank so you. much. I love the books. And I had a question for Sophie, which was, I read in an interview that you liked that very controversial scene. But you like, thought it was interesting to film. And I was wondering, because, you know, Sansa started off as a very naive and innocent character. And from learning through Cersei and from Littlefinger, she kind of became strong. So I was just wondering why it was that they, the scene was chosen to focus A on Theon, and it just felt to me like they kind of diminished. So they kind of made Sophie, so they kind of Sansa, basically not a strong character anymore, just that based on the perception of the scene. I was wondering why you thought it was, oh, I'm not like putting it on the spot. I'm sorry I'm putting it on the spot. No, no, no. There's one thing that Sansa still is, despite what happened to her, it's strong. Uh, any of that. Um, I think, I really don't know why they, you, you'll have to ask right, it's about that one where they focused on Theon, because I was giving a great book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just panning on him, and I'm like, great. Um, uh, I mean, I think Sansa, yeah, she has gone through a lot, but she has, you know, developed skills from Cersei and Marjorie and um, others, uh, and she's still just as strong as she was before, but again, what she's been doing this whole time, this whole series is, she's been kind of just getting by without doing anything uh, totally radical, because that could, you know, totally change her situation, she could die. Um, and with the Boltons, that's a big risk to take, and I think she knows that. She's not stupid, she didn't just think, all right then, this is gonna happen. I think she, she thought it through in her head. She could have fought back if she wanted to, but she didn't. Um, and I think that's, you know, it's good for her character. She, she's one of those characters that kind of does her scheming in her mind rather than outwardly. <clears throat> no worries, man. Uh, all right, thank you in advance, our next question, actors. I just wanted to ask you all if you ever ad-lib and if it ever makes it on the show. Do you guys ever ad-lib? That's such a great question. No. No. Yeah, can't imagine. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to ad-lib on this show? <laughs> like, you wouldn't have a clue what you were trying to say. <laughs> you can't be like, yeah, man, okay, yeah, sick. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh my god, Ramsey's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, how's it going? It's going good. I don't know who's worse, Ramsey or Joffrey, but um, I just wanted to ask, 
Um, okay, so now that we have Drogon um, coming out and showing what he can do, and I was wondering, so the other two dragons, they're still locked up. Are they gonna kind of take Drogon as like a leader? Um, and kind of, because I know right now, Daenerys, um, she can't really control those dragons, but now that Drogon's out, so maybe he could actually kind of become the leader of those dragons, so that they can actually come out and destroy everyone? That's right. <laughs> You're confirming that? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. So. Um. <laughs> so yeah. Drogon is the leader of the dragons. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> That's it. This is a back and forth panel. You learn something, they learn something. That's how this goes. Everybody wins. Uh, looks like we got. Oh, uh, here we go. Hi guys. You can ask Denarius right there. She hey, here we go. Well, they, they probably know the answer to that last there question. Hi guys. <laughs> A little clarification would be wonderful. It's a, just a vast Drogon. He's, he's there. Is that, is that a dragon? Yeah, that's a dragon. And, oh, oh, even, and a man, it's a dragon and a man who's about to have back problems. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. So my question, or our question is, is there going to ever be a season finale that's longer than an hour, like 90 minutes? And... Yeah. More dragons next season. <laughs> Don't build your park. Have you guys ever considered doing a longer finale? Uh, well, our every almost every last episode is longer than now, maybe by a minute or two. Gotcha. <laughs> but may, you know, there are plenty of options out there. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, my question is for Maisie. So I think this season you really turned into like the badass assassin that you've been like becoming. <laughs> but I think one of the most unintentionally funny moments, no offense, was the whole oyster thing. Yeah. I mean, oysters, clams, and cockles. <laughs> like a running joke now. Yeah, so I think it's there's two things that we're pretty sick of seeing is sweeping floors and oysters, clams and cockles. Uh -huh. so, yeah. I feel like going into the new season there might be more training but yeah, maybe more physical. Now. <laughs> you have your clams and, and it was just it was written oysters and cockles and you improvised clams. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that was my ad lib of the <laughs> I think it made it. It really made the show. Hi there. Hi cast. Ooh. Hi. <laughs> Hey, pretty fun question. Um, what's your worst or funniest outtakes you've done? Oh. I don't make mistakes. <laughs> I swear a lot in Dutch, I think. <laughs> uh, Sir Pounce was a nightmare. I think, I think there is a blooper reel where you see a little bit of the experience that Dean Charles and I had, but that cat would not stay on that bed <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's a wonderful I, scene, sir. I had an issue with, um, with, the, with the cat in season one, when Arya's chasing the cat, and she's supposed to not be able to catch the cat, but every single time I could catch the cat, I'm gonna run away. And I said, I said, what, what do I do if I go over and, and, and I like, catch the cat? I said, yeah, but you won't. So in the take, I like walked over stealthily to the cat and then picked it up, and it just went like. So we had the opposite problems. They should, they miscast the cats. I needed that cat, and you needed my cat. Yeah, we needed, we needed to swap cats. We were gonna show the cat audition reel next. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see how wrong they got it. Hey, who's up? Hi, uh, my name is Maddie. I have a question for Carice. Um, what is it like to play such an interesting, complex character that is um, largely vilified by the audience? What's that word? Vilified? Hated. Oh, vilified. Hated. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what that word meant. <laughs> Well, actually, it's been funny because uh, I've never had so much hate mail on the world wide web. Shame. Um, but no, I get it. Um, I mean, it's I, I love to play this character, I, I, and especially last season where 
it sort of starts to crumble a little bit. Um, and like the very last scene where she basically figures out that she was quite wrong. Um, I cannot wait to see what's going to happen with that in the next season. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I'd love to play her. It's, it's, it's really great to play something that I haven't played at all in my life. Like I've always played nice people. Oh, and this yeah, this, this one is a little bit closer to the real Carice. <laughs> I'm Jennifer. I have a question for Sophie Turner. So, um, Theon is a very controversial character. Half the fans want him to die, half the fans think you should forgive him because on one hand, he invaded Winterfell, betrayed the Starks, and almost killed Bran and Rickon, but on the other hand, he's really paid a heavy price. So, if you were in Sansa's shoes, which you are, um, like, <laughs> how, how do you think Sansa should feel towards Theon? How do you feel? That's a good question. That's the question that we've been thinking about all season, I guess, or last season. I think, I mean, Sansa, until, what was it, like episode seven or something, she was totally convinced that he had killed Bran and Rickon. Um, and, I mean, she, she, he still betrayed her family. Um, I didn't almost kill Bran and Rickon, I just killed two peasant boys, yeah. right? <laughs> Boys, come on, only, but only because you couldn't find them. I mean, it wasn't like you. Um, well, he still killed someone. So I'm not gonna be that pleased with him. Um, but uh, I mean, he grew up with them. There's, you know, they've always had that family bond, despite him kind of being awkward. Um, but we don't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I think they have, um, I think because she grew up with him, she still, you know, she, she'll always trust in him that little bit. Where's she gone? She's fine. <laughs> um, How rude. She'll trust, she'll, I know. Um, she'll always Bye. trust in him that Everyone little leaves bit. You. Everyone, Everyone leaves you. Everyone leaves you. Don't my mom. <laughs> Um, sorry, this is taking forever to answer this question. Uh, I think she likes them but she hates them. There you go. Hey! <laughs> uh, hey, who's up? Hello. Hi, my name is Heidi. I'm Rebecca. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Rebecca. We're obviously huge fans of um, the show and especially the strong female characters. Who says nobody likes Clarice? This is Thank you. Woo Uh, this this season and some of the fans have reacted negatively some have reacted really positively so our question is I guess mostly directed at the showrunners and is uh, will season six more overtly address and complicate these criticisms by showing them as the pitfalls of patriarchy rape culture and other forms of oppression thanks well, wow. <laughs> well, yes yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Complicated it will be. <laughs> I mostly like that those guys dressed, put so much time into dressing very similarly, and then one's reading off an iPhone and one has an actual pad. Yeah. So I, <laughs> that, is that the end of that answer, pretty much? You know, I think uh, they're trying to, you know, put together the best, best and most um, realistic would be the wrong word, but a mix of those personalities in that world at the at that mythical time that uh, the show takes place. And so, things were not great for a lot of people, male and female. Yeah. I feel like this year on the show, a lot of characters had a really hard time, not just the women. Yeah, the girls aren't the only ones to do something. Yeah. <laughs> First season, I was the only eunuch in the village. <laughs> then Theon uh, yeah. he jumps on the bandwagon. Then all those guys over with the yeah, he'll yeah. Be you know, solid, yeah. trendsetter. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hi. This question is for uh, Maisie. I was wondering, uh, since this is your first big role, how do you deal with all the newfound fame and attention from fans? Uh, first of all, look at that Sons of the Harpy. That is great, right there. Mark, get yeah. down! 
<laughs> oh, behind. Um, I think it's something that happened very gradually, um, and it wasn't one day I woke up and had to sit in Hall H and chat to thousands and thousands of people. Um, it kind of happened over a long period of time, so uh, I've got a really great family around me who keep me grounded when I'm home, and I'm the youngest of four, so whenever I'm home, I'm reminded of that constantly. Hmm. Don't get to sit on the sofa, I don't get shotgun, and I don't get to choose what's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think the fan attention is wonderful and uh, something I'm really, really grateful for. Sometimes very overwhelming, um, but I am thankful every day for this life that I think all of us are, yeah. this life that we've now found ourselves in. Um, and thank you guys for yeah. that. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Um, oh, nothing cuts like Valyrian steel, so imagine this is my Valyrian sword. Uh, um, you know what you came here for. Ask <laughs> <laughs> you for Gwen. <laughs> my, my question is for the whole cast, um, and I just want to say the last episode was so gratifying. The first half hour, the last half hour was was ah oh, made me so anxious for season six, but um, what made me very happy about this season was seeing storylines cross, seeing um, Tyrion show up with Daenerys, and seeing all the characters that I've loved interact with each other. And for each of you, or any of you, what is a character that you haven't met that you would like to meet? Um, in some upcoming season. I feel like we'd all like to work with Conleth a bit more because he's hilarious. Yeah. Just saying next to him on this panel, I've been laughing way too much. <laughs> and um, please take this more seriously, Conleth. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I, I, well, everybody really. But you won't, so. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. How many, just out of curiosity, how many people in the hall read the books? <laughs> and how many deadbeats just watched the TV show? <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Uh, I have a question for David, the director. If you can talk a bit about the challenges and pressures of the record of show this magnitude, knowing that every year the audience expects something better and bigger. It's massive. When I did the Red Wedding episode, it was a situation in which I had directed episode season two. <laughs> uh, just following the script, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't write it. <laughs> I directed season two and they said, we want you to direct the Red Wedding. And I said, okay, and I didn't know what that was. Then I found out exactly what it was. For nine months I had this pressure on my, on my shoulders. How in the hell am I gonna do this? I survived that and then came season five and 509 and 510. Oh my god, how am I going to do that? The dragons, the walk of shame, all those things. How I do it is because the crew and the cast are so tremendous. They support you, they, they're, with you they're with you all the time, and they really make it happen for you. So it's really the kind of thing where, you know, it's like building a pyramid, each brick at a time, one, one stone at a time. And uh, the talent is beyond measure on this table, and they make it all happen, and I can just sit and let them do it all fantastic work. But it's a great, great experience, and. For a director, there's no better gift than to work with this, work with this cast and work on this show. Just the best. Hi there. Hi, my name is Joelle, and I slept outside the last two days to be the first person in this room. I love you and how you bring your characters to life. My question is our family favorite, Gwendolyn. How does your character, who's always unwavering, loyal, and strong, how was it for you to break down your walls and have that experience and you banter him conversation with Jamie? Do you have a preference on the person you are and then that experience? Um, I found it very interesting when I read the books before, and obviously then the script, about the basis of that relationship, about 
how we, in a mainstream TV show, we got to see this very unique, very unconventional woman uh, enduring abuse from a man. And then the power lay in the fact that that got turned on its head and the two developed a begrudging respect for each other that's intense and close and doesn't have its roots in sexuality. And I was thrilled to see that at last and I felt it was very powerful, modern representation of women. And long overdue. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, how you guys doing? You guys uh, are great. You know, I've been watching you from season one and been going on. Um, if it wasn't for all of you, you you know, you wouldn't have, you know, the great cast you are. So, my question right here is for Rick. You're a good man, you know, even though you do bad things. Often. <laughs> Very often. But, uh, you know, now, right next door, Liam, and then you have Sophie. Uh, do you guys feel like um, you have, uh, it says, do you hate the bad characters that, you know, you know, in real life when they're, you know, when you guys having lunch or something like that? What's the question? <laughs> I, 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 what? What? Do, do we hate the the, the, the the characters in real life? Like the Bolton, and I mean, do you guys get? Yeah, I mean, who could like the Bolton? <laughs> they're, they're, they're an awful bunch. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's definitely interesting shooting it um, when you're as real people, and um, you know, you've got the Boltons looking very regal and sort of absolutely comfortable in this world of terror, and then you've got Sophie, just sort of you know, Sansa being just uh, violated, really. I mean, every every other day and then you've got me a shivering mess in the corner so it's um it's definitely definitely there's been spontaneous fits of laughter sort of when, <laughs> when we're shooting it without a doubt but it's you guys um, look great thank you thank you thank you you dressed up really well for the wedding though i will say that you looked great it was it was if anyone noticed it was rob stark's uh costume just fyi just to make it that like, little bit more brutal yeah. <laughs> yeah i did notice but i want to i don't want to that i did um hey Hi, I just like to thank you all for the fabulous job that you guys do. Uh, my question is for Alfie Allen. I want to know what do you do to prep for the role of Greek? Like the non-physical like gestures that you do in, besides the verbal like stuff that's on the script. Yeah, I mean there was definitely um, a lot of acting with the eyes, um, which I which I which I enjoy. But um, it's I wouldn't say. I have a sort of preparation for it. I think if the energy is not right on the day, then you're kind of messed up. But um, but I would say that I definitely like to sort of decompress on my own a little bit afterwards. And um, me and Uran are actually really good friends, which some people can't find really hard to believe. Um, and so we go out and just play pool in the evenings. But in terms of sort of preparate, you know, preparing for it, I, I don't really have a method to be honest. Hey there. Hey, my name is uh, Peter, and I just wanted to thank you for all that you do and your uh, craft and profession. And I wanted to ask the whole cast, is there a moment that has left an impact on you from the fans? And I just wanted to, you know, ask you what has been a great moment from the fans that you've received? Uh, right now? <laughs> yeah. That's always a good one. Well, about three weeks ago, the number one fan Oh, yeah. President of the United States, I actually had a chance to meet. And he came up to me, we shook, he shook my hand, he looked at me and put his hand here on my shoulder, a hand on my shoulder and said, you didn't kill Jon Snow, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know if I'd be sent off to Guantanamo or what the answer would be, but I said, Mr. President, Jon Snow is deader than dead. <laughs> that was my response. Oh. <laughs> Red Wedding was his favorite episode, and uh, he kept telling me that you keep killing all my favorite characters, so I was uh, felt guilty as charged. That was probably my most exciting moment with a fan. Do people ever just yell things out at you on the street? Yeah, but yeah. nothing to do with the show. No, they don't have anything to do with the show. <laughs> I once had a, a woman run at me with her hand at my crotch level. But that was a great party. <laughs> No, and she, and she, and I, I went, what are you doing? And she, I just wanted to check there was something there. She thought you were really method. I don't speak to my mother anymore. <laughs> I think in 
season six, Eris should start doing stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> the Marine Cellar. Hey, how's it going? Hey, uh, you guys are great. The show's awesome. Um, it's obviously an awesome time to work in TV. It's obviously an awesome time to be a TV fan. So much so that HBO chose your show to test a new distribution method by putting you putting the season five finale in theaters for a couple weeks this past year. Any rumblings with that happening again? And for the cast, what did it feel like being a movie star for a couple weeks? <laughs> well, quite a lot of them are movie stars. <laughs> You know, Natalie and Gwendolyn. I can't hear you. <laughs> as, as the Game of Thrones character. Oh, okay. Bringing that world to the big screen. I didn't know we did that. <laughs> oh. They, they, cool. they sold out everywhere. Oh, oh. thank you. Cool. <laughs> I mean, you meant season four when they went on IMAX. Well, I have to say that for television, they are like one-hour movies. Right. The, the production values, everything about them, are, it, it is like making a movie. So, Ms. Strauss, have you heard any rumblings of them continuing to do that in the future? With uh, you know, I think that that was, the, I think what you're referring to is the IMAX for season four. And, um, that, you know, I think there, there's something that's very specific about that IMAX experience and those particular episodes that really made it suited to, uh, you know, and I, for people want to sort of experience it. Uh, whether that's right or not for the future is yet to be determined. Hi there. Hi. Hi. My name's Noemi, and this is a question for the whole cast. We have a few houses being represented here, but of the houses who are here, who would you want to see rule the realm at the very end, and why? Well, it won't be the Buferathians. <laughs> Um, I'm up for Hodor. Yeah. yeah. He could do as good a job as any of them. Straight talker. Yeah, yeah. Well, straight shooter. Always knows what he's. Uh huh. Always know what he's trying to say. <laughs> I would love to live in a world where Samuel Tarly is king. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, as we saw in earlier this season, I think episode two of this season, where. It was the election of the Lord Commander and, and uh, Sam spoke for Jon Snow and put him forward. The narrative thread through the series meant that by the end of it, Sam was out of there as a direct result of Jon becoming Lord Commander. So we saw that that was actually an acting job from Sam. Right. He, he knows that Jon is probably objectively the best man for the job, but he also had one eye on his and Gilly's and baby Sam's safety. So you can see that when Sam ever has any power or influence at all, it may benefit people at large, but the bastard's always got his own interest on. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, we only have time for one last question, uh, so welcome, and we picked a winner. <laughs> oh, sorry, we need the mic, this is not live. One more time. Stevens as Benjamin Stark. I was curious whether or not Sam would it have any clue as to where his character is going forward from here? They, and they haven't cut off my head or burned my body, so where am I? <laughs> so that's Ben, uh, Benjamin Stark. Oh, is he? That's oh, what he yes. asked. What was Took the question? Me a second, too. Uh, where, uh, he, it's an impossible to answer question. Um, <laughs> Question. No. <laughs> no question is wasted. What was the question? No, it wasn't. It, it was, uh, he asked if Samwell would know where Benjamin Stark is. And is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's... It's fairly possible to answer that, as a matter of fact. That's what I said. No, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. All, all absolutely possible. Um, you guys, uh, thank you. This has been such an honor to be here. Uh, give it up, wait. Give it up. The Game of Thrones cast, everybody. It's very exciting. The panel is going to stay and answer questions about HBO's Ballers. Is that right? Great. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, have a great rest of your Comic Con.